Hey everybody, uh, today we have a BenQ to look at. This is a uh, MH741. Decent little projector, it's from a local school district. This particular projector is uh, it's a 1080p native. Uh, the resolution is 1920 by 1080. It's a uh, 4000 lumen and 10,000 to 1 contrast ratio. I uh, don't know this for a fact, but I'm assuming they have an iris in here if uh, they're getting that kind of contrast rate. The uh, problem with this is that it's dim, kind of. Um, the picture is not real vibrant as it should be, and the lamp isn't that old. I think the lamp is original. Uh, but the first thing I noticed, maybe you noticed that at the beginning, was the lens cap. That's no good. This, I'm pretty sure, is polycarbonate. It's got to get really hot to do that bubbling. The uh, lens itself looks okay. I don't see anything. Yeah, and I don't feel anything. Nothing on there. And I did try it once. I turned it on, and it looked just dim. It looked clear, but it looked dim. So what I'll do is... Let's plug it in so you guys can see it, too. Okay. Power. Alright, now it's coming on. We should see something on the screen. You can, there we go, you can kind of see something coming up there. so you guys can actually see it. See? Now obviously it's crooked. I don't have it set straight. There we are. Now it's pointing straight. The uh, keystone is off, but that's okay. And this is about as bright as it's getting. Uh, with the light off, it's a little more visible. But it's pretty bad. Like, that's... That's crazy dim. Uh, it could be the lamp, but with it this dim, I'd expect the lamp to not work anymore. Like, this is... That's really dim. You can see it's not even getting any brighter. That's about as good as it's getting. So, that's weird. Now, it could be the lamp. That's the first thing we're going to look at. And then we'll start checking the internals. So let's turn it off. Turning off. And then I'll let it cool down and uh, I'll come back. All right, fans off. Let's un unplug the uh, power cord. And then let's see, how do we get the lamp out? Those two. Maybe it just pulls up. Are they really going to make me check the, uh, the manual? See in there? Yeah, that's probably. Yeah. Huh. Something just fell out. That's a bad sound. All right, let's pop those out. Let's see if that, yeah. And then that one. the lamp cover. That's crazy. I've never seen one with three screws like that. I like seeing all these different form factors that BenQ has made for them. Well, that's bad. You don't want that. Loose handle's bad. 
let's uh, fix that first. Let's bend that side in. So I'm going to need this for taking it out. Nope. Still not acceptable. Just a little bit, that's all it needs. Alright, I can work with that. So then these quite sure what's going on there. Let's unhook that and then we'll lift that mess out. Let's see, let's get that. Alright, nothing else loose in it. That's good. It's an Osram 260 with some scribbling on it. Wow. Now the problem might be the bulb being crooked. Look at that. I think this is an OEM too. And then that lens is questionable. Hmm. Curious. Well, I think I know the problem already. The problem is probably the bulb not being straight. Right, we'll set that there. Let's look at a new lamp. This is the lamp you would need 5J JE A05. I believe that was the part. Yeah. 5J E A05 001. I'll put a link in the bottom to where you can get these if you want this this lamp or a lamp that is the same as this one oh wow Let's see if you there you go look at that so this is probably a knockoff junk lamp I don't know if that's a real Osram. 260.9 E20.1. E60.9 E20.9. But I know this one's real. It's got the uh, QR on the side. This has that weird writing on it. Well, I don't know. This means something. That RF1A, I think that's part of the date code. But if the bulb isn't straight, like this one wasn't, it's not going to be bright. But it also doesn't have the protection on the wires. Oh, in fact, let's, let's do a side-by-side. -side. All right. So when you have a projector and you need a lamp, there's so many options out there. You go on Amazon and there's, and most of them sell junk like this. Now, if this is an OEM, I'm going to be very surprised. I'm willing to bet it's not. These screws seem way too long. That bulb looks old. I don't know. I mean, maybe it's OEM, but having that, pencil writing on there just I've seen that so many times on fake you know junk lamps then the uh see that connector how floppy that is if that got like that that close you'd have arcing between ground and this pin and I don't know if that's the hot or the return but it's not good for that to be that close the it's flimsy you know this they double rolled the edges to give it a little more rigidity they also covered the wires with extra insulation so it's a little just just cleaner bulb nice and tight this one it's just it's loose Let's see if i can push it back in Nah. Well, I will put this housing back together, but I also don't see 
a very good UV IR block coating on there. I see basically none. I'll put the good lamp next to it. And you can even see that red purple coating showing up already. So many problems are caused by junk lamps. Don't buy your lamps on Amazon. Go to Bulb Solutions. Go to projectorlamps.com. Not my projector lamps and not projector lamp source. Go to a company that knows what they're doing and ask questions. Ask me. E uh, feel free to comment to me, email me, and ask me if I think the place you're buying the lamp from is worth buying from. There's a couple companies I'm biased towards, but I have no dog in the fight. I would rather tell you what you need to hear rather than, you know, act as a shill for a company. So... Please ask. Otherwise, you end up with stuff, you know, stuff like this. <laughs> it just pulls right out. Like, that shouldn't happen. And then I just noticed this connector. See? That stuff just falls off. Then you get arcing. It heats up these connectors. They warp. It's just everything about this is not good. Well... Before we even bother with the old lamp, let's set that over there. Let's put in the test lamp. It's very easy. Drops in the. Um, there's no place where the bottom catches, so you just get your the nubs up in the front here lined up. Will be good. See that one and that one. And then we'll put the screws in. And the screws do not need to be super tight. Just bring them down until they stop. These screws just keep the lamp from moving. You don't have to crank down on them. And then lastly, we'll plug in the lamp wire. We'll just set it there. The cover will hold it down. Then we'll snap the cover back on. Those guys go there first. We'll just push down. I'm not going to bother with the screws yet. Because this might be the whole thing. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if that lamp was a big cause of it. I'm just going to put a piece of foam to help jack the projector up. So let's see, we have power. Wow, already that fast, huh? Much better. I don't have the projector straight. There we go. Yeah, look at that. You can actually see the menu. Make it big. Now, remember that color that you're seeing, that rolling color, is because of the uh, color wheel. Let's see if we can cheat it. Sometimes I can get it to sync up, but not in this case. All right, so focus, let's get it nice and focused. I'm trying to see if there's a test. Let's see if there's a test pattern somewhere in here. Test pattern, there we go. Yeah. All right, so we have a, we have a bad lamp definitely a bad lamp. I will not even going to bother putting that one back. I mean, I'm going to put the bulb back in, but I'm going to suggest that we just get a new lamp and they can save this one for backup. Let's turn this down, or turn this off, rather, and um, we'll put the lamp back together now. Now, you never want to touch that thing with your finger or anywhere inside there with your finger 
want to try not to touch out here with your finger. It's not that big a deal if you do. Back here is okay. I mean, you know, don't go nuts. Try not to handle anything any more than you need to. But you're not going to cause uh, image problems or short lamp life if you hold it back there on the outside. So let's take this clip off. Ah, uh, I see what they're doing. Well, we'll do it without taking the bottom plate off. We can take out um, that screw and release this whole thing from it, but I don't need to do that. I can do it through here. Just the, the metal of this housing feels thin and chintzy. If this is an original, I'll be very surprised. And then we'll set our, our bulb in, kind of. There we go, it sits right there. And just kind of on the top of those edge pieces. And then the clamp goes on. Now, if you notice, there's a little nub right there. That should line up. with that and then now I can start putting those screws back in well if I can keep this in frame the whole time I'm going to be impressed with myself Yeah, that's way tighter. Now, and then these. I'm just going to give those a little squeeze with some pliers. Just a little bit. Oops. Because really this thing's not going to work very well anyway without the uh, good lens on it. That's a lot better. So this thing was never assembled right. That's weird. And then again the lens. Yeah, oh, you can really see it. You see that green? That's the cheap coating. You never want that coating, bad coating. These tend to wear out really quickly. It's like nickel or something, I think. Could be wrong, but this is supposed to be an IR block, or a, yeah, IR block coating, and it doesn't work. If uh, you buy a new lamp and it has that green coating, then your projector runs for, I don't know, 10, 20 seconds or so, and then shuts down with the lamp light, that's your problem. So, anyway, let's uh, get this all together. And before I put the screws back in, I think we should open this up and just give it a cleaning so that they know everything is good to go. 
So let me get set up here for uh, disassembly and cleaning. Okay, I got my tools together. Let's start by removing the lamp again. see the inside I can already tell you this is probably a Delta made unit next we have one two three four five screws with arrows which is convenient those five out you should be able to pop this off Okay, so make sure before you take the top off, you bring the uh, zoom ring all the way back so that that will clear the opening. Then we have a keyboard. And disconnect up here because it's taped there. Yeah, this is a, uh, this looks like it's Delta made. Looks like the Polyvisions and Optimos that are using that same universal power supply. You can tell blue, black, red. Standby, ground, 12 volt. Thing's actually pretty clean. Oh, and then the clincher, of course, is Mr. Cloggy Fan. These always get clogged. In fact, you can kind of see the dust build up already. You can get a flashlight on it, you can see it better. See it right there? That gets on the blades and that changes their aerodynamic. I think that's the word. So we'll clean that fan out. Give that one a give this one a little blast. Too. This thing's not too bad. It's got, you know, some, but it's not terrible. I just figured since it's here, we'll do it. Alright, so I have my airline. Now I have a regulator on this that knocks the air pressure way down. You never want to use full you know, 100 and some PSI or whatever. I have this set to between 10 and 15. What I'm doing here is the fan wants to go clockwise. See? And what I'm doing is I'm pushing it counterclockwise while I do this. I like to hold the blades from spinning so that they don't overspeed and then fly apart. I've had that happen with these kind of fans when they get old.
Hopefully you notice a little puff of dust that came out. Oh, piece came out. The ballast is under here, so I'm trying to get all into that. So that's pretty clean. We're not going in here. We're not going under there. That's all fine. We just want to make sure that all of the obvious dust is out of the way so that when we put it back together, the customer knows that they're essentially starting over. Let's go back to the bench. Now we can put it back together. Um, before we reassemble this, I want to show you some things I found. We have a date code for this particular mold. This mold is from 2016, April 26th. Yeah, so April 26th, 2016, this housing was made. And it looks like it may have been assembled May 2017, maybe. So you can always look for that. In uh, plastic molded stuff from uh, decent companies, usually you'll see some sort of date code. Oh, we have more info down here. Okay. So it's polycarbonate. Fiber reinforced 40%. Rev 02. It is recyclable. And then I guess the part number there is uh, 339-22776XX, probably 77602 with the rev number. So it's just a, it's an interesting thing about plastic. You can kind of learn a little bit about what's going on. Handy for recycling, which is why they put that there. All right, so next, let's reattach the keyboard cable. Contact side towards the board. Get it until the line is lined up there and snap it on in. And we'll put the front on and we'll kind of work the, uh, put that in the middle. doesn't look like it I am feeling for the threads I'm not just driving these in willy-nilly there we are I gotta put new cardboard on my bench top here to it's getting dirty okay let's get the new lamp I'm going to leave this lamp installed until I talk to the customer. Uh, they will probably just go for it. Like I said, it's for a school. But I will keep the old lamp ready for them. They could always save it as an emergency backup, but I wouldn't use it and rely on it. Okay, that's good, that's good. covers back on. Let's put this one in first. Oops. Take two. Let's put this one in first.
And then lastly, this one, then I'm going to take it over to the test area where we cleaned it and we'll set it up and point it at the, the screen. Not too bad. All right. So let's see, I already see it coming up. And I do have the lights on, so I do expect. I see a good picture here. Get it focused. Oh yeah. Oh, let me drop the uh, foot down. There we go. Alright. And then we have the Raspberry Pi. Tighten that in a little more, get it all on the screen. Not really. You get the idea. This is with the lights on in the room. There we go with the lights off. Obviously much brighter. So yeah, if, uh, if you have any questions about the lamp or your BenQ, uh, feel free to put them in the uh, comments below. Still getting good at that. And as always, thank you for watching.